Hello everybody, this is Tim again here with my review for Scream. Just to jump into the film here, this is a great like meta horror movie film. I'm pretty sure this movie was uh, uh, responsible for creating the term meta or bringing it into the at least into the public consciousness. Pretty much when this film came out, horror movies were pretty much dead. The horror genre was. This movie really helped revitalize the horror genre. I'd lay more of this movie's success on Kevin Williamson than I would Wes Craven. But Wes Craven still does a really good job directing here. And New Nightmare. Uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare was pretty much a precursor film to this movie since it dealt with some of the same <clears throat> same style subject matter of horror happening in real, happening in, uh, real life. So I will still give credit to Wes Craven for this movie. But I would give more credit to this movie uh, to Kevin Williamson, basically. But just jump into this film here. This film has a great cast. you got Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, David R. Kent. I'm not even that big a fan of Courtney Cox, really, but I think she does good here. You got uh, like uh, Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, David Arcant, uh, Matthew Lillard, um, Skeet Yerlich, I think is how you say his last name. Um, he was actually in uh, the movie The Craft with Nev Campbell as well. I'm not sure what came first, this or The Craft, um, but uh, they were both in the same two movies together. You get Matthew Lillard, um, Jamie Kennedy, all kinds of people. Oh, Rose McGowan, which she's a she's a hot little number. <laughs> um, I think she's pretty hot. Some people don't, but I, I do. I think she's pretty hot, at least in this movie. But just to jump into the film here. Oh, and, and uh, <coughs> sorry. Hmm. Some people don't like this movie because they kind of attribute. Uh, I mean, they kind of a. Uh, I mean, some people don't like this movie because they just hate all the imitator movies that came out, all the other movies that try to copy this style. Like, I know what you did last summer, Urban Legend, but. You, you can't, I don't really think you can hate on the movie, the original film that spawned all that. Uh, I mean, all those other movies are just rip-offs of this movie's style, this movie's meta style. I don't think you can blame this movie for all the rip-offs. I mean, it was the same thing in the 80s with the slasher movies. All the other slasher movies were spawned from uh, Halloween and Friday the 13th and shit. You can't blame the original films um, uh, for, the copy, for the copy films' um, lack of success. And shittiness. Urban Legend. I fucking hate Urban Legend, to be honest. I'll do a review for it maybe sometime in the future, but just to get it out there, I despise that movie. And I hate a lot of the imitators of this movie, but you can't. what I'm saying is you can't blame this movie for the imitators, for the shittiness of the imitators. Just jump into this film. Basically, the the kill, the, there's, I mean, everybody's seen this movie. I, there's not really much you can get in way. I mean, I, there's not really anything I can spoil, and spoil in terms of the story. Because everybody on the planet has probably seen this movie by now. Um, you got Drew Barrymore at the beginning here. Who you uh, probably didn't think was going to die when you first start watching the movie. Because she's Drew Barrymore. But I don't think she was actually that big of a star by, by this point. But if you see the movie now though. And you see Drew Barrymore. You probably don't think she's going to get killed though. But I'm not sure what all she had been in up until this point. But um, she gets killed at the beginning in a really gruesome scene. The killer wears this... Uh, really creepy mask. It kind of has like a, a face that looks like it's screaming on it. It's a very popular like Halloween item nowadays. Um, it was based off of a painting by an artist whose name I forgot, but you've probably seen the painting. It's got a dude pretty much with his hands up to his face and a face like this. <laughs> Not really like that. Be better looking than that, but still, it's pretty. It's pretty similar to that kind of look, except of course it looks better than me. <laughs> but uh, anyway. And, uh, it's like, really, you get some creepy shit here where the killer, like, calls her on the phone, and he's, like, fucking with Drew Barrymore, and he's, like, name the killer in Friday the 13th, and she says, Jason, and he's, like, that's the wrong answer, <laughs> and he's, like, Jason's mom was the killer in the first Friday the 13th, Jason didn't show up until the sequel, which is pretty fucking funny, because almost everybody gets that wrong all the time, a lot of people do think Jason was the killer in the first movie, which he wasn't, <laughs> which I find funny, um, but Drew Barrymore gets like gutted and her guts are hanging out. She gets hung from a tree. Pretty graphic scene. Um, I mean, definitely a, a horrible way to go. One thing I like though is that when the killer's attacking her, she like knees him in the nuts. <laughs> One thing I hate though is that her parents are like pulling up and instead of like running directly to him, she stops and tries to holler at him, but she can't because she's been strangled and she can't yell. Um, but. I mean, why don't you just keep running? You could have made it if you just kept running to your parents. I'm like, that's kind of stupid. But still, um, her boyfriend gets like his guts cut out. He's like tied up sitting on the, the patio in a chair. And he gets his guts cut out. 
I thought that was great. Um, another thing, another thing I laugh at every time is because when Drew Barrymore is talking to the killer on the phone, she's talking about you, you, you better get out of here because when my boyfriend shows up, he's big and he plays football and he'll kick the shit out of you. I love that. that I thought that was hilarious. That just makes me laugh every time. Um, but uh, you got Neff Campbell in the movie. Her mom was, I guess, like a big slut, pretty much. Um, and she, and uh, Neff Campbell put had this guy put in the gas chamber to actually leave Schreiber in a very small role, um, pretty much a cameo, really. Um, and she had him put, uh, well, not in the gas chamber, but put in prison. He's going to get the gas chamber. She thinks that he killed her mom, but her mom was a big slut, and she was sleeping around with, I guess, every guy in the whole fucking town. To be honest, after you get all the information about her mom from the, the, all these movies, you could do a whole prequel Lifetime movie just about her mom. But anyway, so um, the it turns out, I mean, no, there's no way I can spoil this movie. Pretty much it turns out that the killer is Nev Campbell's boyfriend, played by Skeet Yurlich. Once again, I don't know if that's how you say his last name. A lot of people say he looks like Johnny Depp. I kind of see it, but in a way, I kind of don't. But uh, him and Matthew Lillard are pretty much the killers. And is it just me, but at the end of the movie, when him and Matthew Lillard are like huddled up with each other, don't they don't they seem like they might be gay? I mean, I don't mean that in a negative way or anything. I have no problem with gay people. But doesn't it seem like these two characters are gay? I know a lot of people have spotted this out, but I just got to say it again. <laughs> I just think it's pretty obvious there's something going on there. But <clears throat> you got Courtney Cox in the movie, and she's like a reporter. And she keeps fucking aggravating Nev Campbell because she was the one that uh, testified I, uh, in, on behalf of Cotton Weary, which was the guy that was accused of killing Nev Campbell's mom. So she was in favor of him, and Nev Campbell's pissed off about that, pretty much. Uh, you get a funny scene where she, Nev Campbell, like, fucking punches Courtney Cox right in the face. I thought that was funny because she's just tired of her bullshit and her aggravating her. Um, as far as, uh, other kills in the movie, oh, one surprising thing is Henry Winkler is in this movie, the Fonz, you know, hey, what the fuck is he doing in this movie? He just seemed like such odd casting, and he gets, like, stabbed to death at school, he's the principal, he gets killed by Ghostface, Ghostface is, uh, Ghostface is what people call the killer, horror fans call him, um, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna call him Ghostface. Ghostface, like, stabs the fuck out of the Henry Winkler at school, and he's the principal, and I'm like, why did they kill him? I don't get that. Why kill the principal? I mean, what was the point of that? His death is the only one in the movie that kind of seemed a little off. Not because it was a bad death, but just because it kind of seemed like a what the fuck moment. Like, why is he on the killer's kill list? But whatever. Um, Nev Campbell gets attacked in the movie, but the killer gets away. But then you got uh, her boyfriend. I'm just going, I don't know how to pronounce the guy's last name. Yurlich, yeah, whatever. Uh, but uh, Billy Loomis is uh, the character's name. But he shows up there after the killer gets away and he drops a cell phone out. So automatically Nev Campbell assumes it's him like pretty much anybody would because he just showed up after the killer left and he's got a cell phone too. Uh, one, one funny thing I find about this movie is that David R. Kent is like a cop in the movie, but he's the cop that like nobody takes seriously. I like it how every time he looks at Rose McGowan, who's playing his sister in the movie, he's like, what did mama tell you? When I'm wearing this badge, you treat me like a man of the law. I oh, found that fucking funny as, as, as all shit. Uh, that was uh, that was hilarious, I thought. Um, but David Arcant in this movie has like a sweet likability to him, makes him enjoyable to watch. Um, Matthew Matthew Lillard in the movie, uh, he pretty much does his Matthew Lillard thing, and it's good. It it hel it's, it doesn't hurt the movie or anything. He's he's funny at most of the time. Jamie Kennedy, he uh, he's likable here. He's funny. I think Jamie Kennedy's career is pretty much turned to shit, but he is he is funny here. I think Jamie Kennedy is a type of actor who is better in secondary roles and doesn't really so much need a uh, lead character role. I think he's better as a secondary character, but he's good here. He's pretty much the movie uh, fanatic guy who knows every single thing there is to know about horror films, which automatically made me like his character the most. He's pretty much the most likable character for horror fans in the movie because of all his movie knowledge. He even works at a video store. One thing I find funny is that he knows that Billy's the killer, and he's in like a movie store talking to Stu about it, and Stu's played by Matthew Lillard, and he's talking to Stu about it, and uh, Billy walks over to him, and he's like, how do we know you're not the killer? Maybe your movie freak mind lost its reality button, and uh, he like he like walks off after that, and then uh, Jamie Kennedy looks at Matthew Lillard, and he goes, now you're telling me that's not a killer. <laughs> I love that. That was funny. This movie has some really funny humor. 
It also has some like uh, callbacks to Nightmare on Elm Street, like Billy's like sneaking up through um, Nev Campbell's window because he keeps wanting to have sex with her, but she doesn't want to have sex. Um, so she's the virgin. <laughs> and uh, and another thing, you got like I believe it's Wes Craven himself is actually dressed up like Freddy Krueger, and he's the janitor at the school and a little cameo. I thought that was great. Um, Rose McGowan gets her head crushed in a garage door. You can kind of tell it's a dummy, though, when she gets her head crushed. That's a little off, a little dated, that effect is. But it's still a, a cool idea. I like the idea of somebody getting their head crushed in a garage door. One thing I find funny is that the killer ghost face in this movie, he trips and falls down a buckload. I mean, like, all the time. Well, not all the time. He does it a lot more in the sequels. But on here, he does it a little bit, a little bit too much. He falls down a little bit too easy sometimes. I do like it when Tatum, played by Rose McGowan, is like in the garage trying to get away from him, and she's splitting his fucking brains out with a, uh, <laughs> with alcohol. I found that funny. And uh, he he keeps falling. She like knocks his brains out with the top of the refrigerator door, and he falls again. <laughs> like I said, he falls a little bit too much. Um, I like some of the, I like a lot of the dialogue in here, like at the beginning when uh, the killer's calling um, Drew Barrymore, and he's like, I want to see what your insides look like, and I want to know who I'm looking at. Like that kind of shit, that's creepy. And uh, that, that works really well in this movie's favor, like a creepy motherfucker on the phone line. And whoever does the voice of Ghostface, I forgot the guy's name, but he does great. Ghostface's voice is great. Want, uh, but yeah, whoever that actor is, he's great. Um... But yeah, uh, they they end up taking uh, Billy Loomis to the. They think that he's the killer, but uh, the uh, the killer calls ne calls Nev Campbell on the phone while she's like spending the night with her friend Tatum, and so they let Billy loose. But obviously, if you've seen the movie, you know Billy is the killer, and he has an accomplice, obviously Stu, <laughs> played by Matthew Lillard, which I thought was funny. Of all people, his accomplice is Shaggy from Scooby Doo, but. I one thing leads to another, and at the end of the movie here, you got they're all at a big party. Uh, one thing I do find hilarious in this movie is that like Jamie Kennedy gets a phone call and this uh, he's talking to somebody, and then he turns around and he gets off the phone. And he goes, "They found Principal Henry dead. Uh, he was gutted and hung from the the golf post or something like that, or the or field goal post or something." Um, and uh, all the other kids go, "Well, what the hell are we waiting for? Let's get out of here before they pry him down." <laughs> I'm like, "What the fuck?" But anyway. I thought that was hilarious, but at the same time, I'm like, why the fuck would anybody want to see their principal, like, hanging dead from something? I'm like, what? But anyway, that was a little weird. Um, and the killer shows up at the party. He's taking people out left and right. You get a, the, uh, Courtney Cox has a cameraman in this movie, and he gets his throat slit by the killer. And a pretty, it's pretty, uh, pretty intense little scene where the guy gets his throat slit and he like turns around and falls directly on the ground one thing i'm wondering though is how the hell did the killer manage because this is kind of a big dude so how the fuck did the killer manage to take the guy's body and put him on top of the uh of courtney cox's van i'm um, that kind of made me confused because the dude is kind of heavy set so i'm kind of wondering how he managed to do that as quick as he did in the movie because he does it kind of fast um that seems like it would have been hard to do but anyway oh oh Another thing that kind of hurts the movie is just some stupid shots in this movie. Like, uh, the killer's, like, walking around in a grocery store spying on Neb Campbell dressed up in full costume the killer is. And I'm like, what the fuck is up with that? That's a stupid shot. Didn't need to be in the movie. Another thing is, like, um, <clears throat> the killer, he, like, attacks Neb Campbell at the school. And he just, like, fucking disappears. He attacks her in the, the girl's bathroom. And Neff Campbell runs directly out of there. And I'm like, how did the guy get out of the girl's bathroom in full costume without anybody, without any of the teachers seeing him? Or how did he hide the costume and then come out of the girl's bathroom? Because obviously it been, it would have been, like, the first guy you saw come out of the bathroom would have been the killer. So I'm like, how'd they pull that off? That's kind of a little, that's kind of a plot hole. Um, Pretty much Billy and Stu are trying to frame uh, Neff Campbell's dad in the movie uh, for the murders. And at the end of the movie, of course, you find out there's two killers. One thing I like, though, is that Billy gets stabbed a bunch of times. And you think he's dead, but really, obviously, his death was faked. Although, when he started coming back down the stairs at the end of the movie, at the party, um, I knew he had to be in on it in some way, shape, or form. Um, and so, we're at the party at the end of the movie. And... Um, David Ar I mean not yeah, David Ar can't get stabbed in the back. There's like a romance coming between him and Courtney Cox in the movie, which I think is kind of sweet. And uh in real life they actually did, did get together. 
I believe they got a divorce now, but it, they kind of they have chemistry together in the movie, and it's kind of sweet. I like it when he looks at Courtney Cox. He's like, um, you know what that constellation is up there? And she goes, no, I don't. And he goes, well, I don't either. That's why I was asking you. <laughs> I thought that was funny. There's some cuteness there. But he gets stabbed in the back. Ja One thing I find funny is like Jamie Kennedy like surprises Courtney Cox, and she thinks he's the killer, and she like knocks his brains out with a, a phone I believe she's holding in her hand, which I thought was funny. Another thing I find funny is that when it's just Nev Campbell left in the house at the end at the party, after after everybody's left the party, um, Jamie Kennedy and uh, Matthew Lillard are like coming towards her, and uh, they're, bo uh, they're bo both trying to convince her that the other one's the killer. She's like, fuck you both, and locks them out, locks both of them outside. Oh, that was great, and that, that's actually more realistic for a person to do. Uh, but you find out pretty much that uh, Sydney's mom, well, yeah, Nev Campbell's character in the movie, her name is Sydney. Um, you find out that Sydney's mom was like fucking Billy's dad back in the day. That's what caused Billy's mom to, to abandon him and leave. He blames, uh, he kills, he was pretty, he was really the one that killed Sydney's mom, him and Stu was. And, uh, so now he wants to take his vengeance out on Sydney, <laughs> pretty much. Um, one thing I also find cool is that they're like watching Halloween and, um, and then at the end of the movie when, um, Billy is getting ready to uh, attack Sydney. He like gets distracted because he's watching Halloween as well, and she manages to stab him with an umbrella. But but I know this review is a bit all over the place, but I really like the movie, and pretty much everybody's seen it, so you don't really need like a completely cohesive you know uh, overview of the plot structure or story structure of the movie piece by piece because everybody's seen this damn thing. There's not really much I can even add to this movie, like from from my views personally, because everybody else pretty much. I mean, most people have the same views on the movie as I do. There's not really much I can add to it. But um, one thing I hated, though, is that Courtney Cox manages to get the gun, and she's going to take out Billy and Stu, and she's like doesn't realize the safety is on, and Billy knocks her out. And I'm like, oh, come on, Courtney Cox. What the fuck? You can do better than that shit. But um, Nev Campbell gets away, but she's got the ghost face uh, costume on, and... Um, she manages to get the upper hand on uh, on Billy and stabs him down with an umbrella. And then uh, Stu takes off after her. And this death is kind of stupid. She drops a TV on his head. And there's no way that you can like bust a TV screen on somebody's face just by dropping it down on them. That would have just hurt him really bad. It wouldn't have killed him. That's a little, that's un that's a little, that's one of the unbelievable moments in the movie. But it doesn't hurt the movie too bad. So that's how Matthew Lillard gets killed. He gets a TV busted on his head and gets electrocuted. Um, one, another thing I really like is that after Courtney Cox shoots Billy, uh, they walk up to him and Jamie Candy's like, uh, this is the moment where, where the supposedly dead killer comes back for one final scare. And then, uh, he, he does leap up and Nev Campbell blows his brains out and she goes, not in my movie. <laughs> and then all at once her dad like jumps into the room where they're at and they all get scared. It's one last little jump scare. I like that. That was cool. Um, another thing I forgot to mention is that. When you, when you find out that Billy and Stu are the killers, they got to make it look like they were attacked by the killer but survived. And they start stabbing the shit out of each other. And I'm like, damn, these motherfuckers are committed <laughs> to making this look real. It was real as possible. But that was great. Um, but yeah, all in all. But another thing is that at the end, David Arkant is still alive. I don't have a problem with that because I liked his character. But it does seem like they wanted to kind of... I mean, I've heard that they wanted to, that they, he was supposed to die. But they kept him around anyway because uh, because his character was likable, which that kind of makes sense. But he probably should have died from the stab in the back. But still, I can pretty much buy it that he survived. I like his character, so I don't really give a fuck anyway. So, you know, shit on it. But that's kind of a little, I mean, that's kind of a little gripe at the movie because it does seem like he should have died from the knife in the back. But it's still cool to have him around at the end. Pretty much the movie ends. Billy and Stu are dead. Um, and then Courtney Cox is like, you know, reporting on the case uh, at the crime scene. And that's when the movie ends. You know, great movie, really. It's a really hip movie. It's more of a, um, a movie for, uh, horror fans that have seen, you know, a lot of horror movies. Or at least have studied up on them in some way, shape, or form. Like, you get Jamie Kennedy reciting the rules of horror movies in this movie. Talking about, um... You never have sex, never do drugs, and all that shit. You get, uh, I mean, this is pretty much a movie for horror fans, but at the same time, it's a uh, entertaining enough with entertaining enough cast 
that anybody who just likes wants to watch a good like slasher movie can enjoy it. You don't have to be like a really big horror fan or anything to enjoy it, but it might make you want to watch more horror movies though after you see it, which is a good thing in my opinion. But yeah, this is a great movie. I'd give it four stars out of four. Um, this movie, I, as a matter of fact, I liked so much when I first saw it. I actually hated the sequels, at least part two and three. I haven't seen four in a long time. I, I really hated part two and three the last time I saw them because I liked this movie so much. I felt that they were so inferior to this movie. Um, but um, I'd have to see those movies again. I think because I I, I watched this movie in a row. I watched all these movies in a, in a row, pretty much. And I like this one so much that I kind of hated two and three, but... I think I was just on a high from this movie, pretty much. And I think I need to go in with more realistic expectations for 2 and 3 when I watch them this time. And grade them more for what they are instead of what I wanted them to be. So, I'll see you guys again review for Scream 2. This is a great horror film. It helped revitalize the horror journey in the 90s. Um, I'd give it 4 stars out of 4. It's a lot of fun. It's got a great cast. Courtney Cox, David R. Kent, Matthew Lillard, Nev Campbell, um, Skeet Yerlich, however you say his last name. Uh, Johnny Depp number two, uh, pretty much what people call him, or 2.0. Um, but yeah, this is a great cast in this movie. It's a lot of fun. And I'll see you guys again with Scream 2.